Welcome back to John's Films. I've gotten a lot of requests for tutorials that show how to do this effect, highlighting a portion of your screen. So let's check it out. Let's get started. To create the zoom in feature, I use the mask and that's found here in the color tab. So I jump to the color page and here is some footage I was using for a 3D moon tutorial for 3D compositing that I built last week. You can check the video out at the link above. Let's say I want to focus your attention on something. I use a mask, so to do that, you use down here at the bottom and typically in the middle, except for it's a smaller window for me at the moment. I use a mask where maybe I'll take the square and I'll say, you know, I really want to focus the user, so take the mask, on this upper left window, so viewer one here in Fusion. And to do that, I'm going to put the mask around viewer one in Fusion and Typically, if you're using a mask like this, what would happen? Um, if I want to see what it looks like, I can click the highlight section there. It would allow me to color treat just this area. This is useful when you're trying to fix skin tones or adjust different areas of your image. In this case, however, I don't want it to treat that part of the area. I'm going to treat the inverse of that. Now, in doing that, I've now got a node that has a single mask on it. That mask is masking out the area that I want to highlight. Well, how's that helpful, John? Well, it's pretty simple. Now I can come into my color wheels and color grade down, uh, just using the offset, take the entire uh, brightness luminance down to a darker color. And what do I get? I get a focused area directly across, which is normally lit against the background, which is all of the other stuff. And this allows me to focus the user's attention on that spot. You want to get fancy about it? we can get kind of fancy about it, which is to say, hey, look, let's go into our keyframes, which are accessible right here with the diamonds on the right-hand side of the screen at the bottom. Uh, so what you're able to do with your keyframes is take node corrector one, which is this node here, and then I can pick my, my component that I want to adjust. So in this case, I'd like to just keyframe all of it. And I'm going to go back to this. Now, I can start this, say, at the very beginning of the clip, with everything in my mask by first clicking this so that the keyframe diamond is red, which says, hey, look, I'm going to keep track of what you're doing relative to the frames in this clip. I'm at the beginning of that right here. Now I'm going to move this forward just a touch, maybe two, three seconds, and this will be my zoom in effect. So now, whoops, wrong one. Got to grab the corner of that and zoom it in. There we go. And this really helps to draw the user's attention to it um, because you're creating motion and the motion catches their eye and then they're able to see it pretty clearly. So now you know I'm focusing on that. And so I've got a keyframe situation where I start wide and it zooms down in. Now you won't see the mask there. It'll look more like, it'll look more like a, um, a focus area than it will the big block that's there. But... Um, it does focus them down. Now, you may say to yourself, yeah, that's that's great, John, but kind of need it bigger. It's kind of small. Well, you can do the same thing with the sizing on this. I like to do all the sizing stuff in one spot, which is back over here. So we can go into this clip now, and I can see where this is what it's starting to look like. Pretty good. Okay. But I don't like that I don't have a perfect um, keyframe around that. So what I'm going to do, open my inspector. I've got my zoom and my position. This is why I like to do all the sizing here. I've got them available to me immediately. I'll put the playhead back at the start of that clip. I'll hit the keyframing diamonds on the right. Now that I've got my keyframes turned on and I've set my starting keyframe, I'm gonna zoom in to where, right there, where it's focused in. And I'm now going to create a keyframe relative to the zoom and the position for this. Now I'm gonna zoom in a touch. We'll change the position over and the Y axis goes up and boom. Now I have a focus here, and as I as I blink it, uh, darken it out, I'm also zooming in. You can see now it's really focusing the user, giving them enough field to work with. And to get out of this, it's obviously going to be just the same. So I will now create another keyframe, which is there, and then I will let it go for a couple seconds, and I will zoom back out. So we'll go back to a one. And we'll knock this back down to zero and zero. And there we go. I'm back out. 
wait, that didn't look quite right. So what I'm going to do now, before I go back to the color page, hit back to the keyframe that locked in the good zoom there, jump to the color page, and you can imagine what I'm going to do here, which is to say, okay, I'm here at the initial, and I need to make sure that that's locked in. So I will, um, in this case, to, to make it easy, I just kind of touch, touch this. Nobody will notice the delta between here and here. Um, and then I'll drag this forward just a touch to where I'm zoomed back out. And I want to zoom the uh, gradient out as well. So I will lighten it back up, back to where I get to 25, which is the starting point for the offset wheel. Or close enough. It doesn't have to be an exact science, frankly. Nobody's going to notice the difference between that. And now I've got my full uh, zoomed out. There we go. Zoom in, and you see the mask coming in with the inverted darkness. And then just like that, you'll see it start to zoom back out, and you'll see the darkness abate. And here we are back at a normal view of the image. I've gotten a lot of questions about this here on YouTube, and I thought, hey, that's a quick, easy video. So let's throw it up there. Thank you for watching. I hope this helps you, and have a great day. Subscribe and like. Thanks.